In today's episode, we're going to explore the story of Montreal's Mirabelle Airport, a tale that stands as a stark reminder of how grand visions can sometimes lead to monumental failures. Conceived in the late 1960s, Mirabelle Airport was destined to be the crowning jewel of Canadian aviation, a futuristic hub that would handle the ever-growing influx of air traffic and serve as a beacon of modernity and efficiency. Yet what unfolded was a narrative of miscalculation and misfortune. Mirabelle, despite its state-of-the-art design and sprawling size, quickly descended into a quagmire of logistical challenges and unfulfilled promises. Isolated from the heart of Montreal, burdened by inadequate transportation links, and overshadowed by the already established Dorval Airport, Mirabelle's dream of becoming a central aviation hub soon dissipated into the air of disappointment. So let's dive in. In the 1960s, the city of Montreal began experiencing quite the economic boom. Complementing this growing economy was a rapidly expanding infrastructure, including the Montreal Metro. Likewise, the number of visitors to the city was also climbing every year, especially since at the time Montreal was the only possible Canadian destination for European airlines. Now, all of this meant that Montreal's airport, Dorval Airport, was being hit with an estimated 20% increase in airline traffic every year and there was a fear that it would soon be pretty overcrowded. This meant that the airport would likely need to be expanded. However, there isn't a ton of space to expand the Dorval Airport, since on one half it's bordered by the city of Montreal, and on the other half it's bordered by water. Now seeing this, it was decided that the best course of action was to build an entirely new airport outside the crowded city limits so that it could be as large as possible. So just before we continue with today's video, do you ever struggle with developing a consistent skincare routine that makes you look and feel fantastic? Well, look, you're not alone, and today's sponsor has a solution that'll have you glowing with confidence. And that sponsor is, of course, T. Shanley. And speaking of T. Shanley, they've got the ultimate solution for guys like you and me, helping us start and maintain effective skincare without any fuss. Look, start off with their level one system. You get a daily face wash, a bi-weekly exfoliating scrub, and an AM moisturizer with SPF 50, and a PM moisturizer as well. And guess what? Each box contains an instruction card making skincare a breeze. With over 5,000 five-star reviews worldwide, they're clearly doing something right. As a Tiege Hanley member, you enjoy perks like at least 20% off, customizable boxes, exclusive deals, flexible subscription options, and free US shipping. Your skin and your wallet will thank you. Thanks to Tiege Hanley for sponsoring today's video. Just click the link in the description below and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a fantastic free gift. And now back to today's video. The Canadian Department of Transportation started investigating locations for this new airport, narrowing it down to five places. The federal government preferred the location at Vaudreuil Dorian to the west of Montreal, with the reasoning that this spot would also be fairly close to Ottawa and could become the perfect international gateway to both important cities. The other reason this was a good area was because it was already well connected with roads and railways, meaning lots of basic infrastructure was already in place and simply needed to be expanded to allow for the airport's construction. However, Quebec's premier didn't like this option. Not really for any practical reasons, but simply because he didn't want such an important project being too close to the border with Ontario. Instead, he proposed the new airport be constructed in the opposite direction in Drummondville. The federal and provincial governments went back and forth for a while before finally negotiating and agreeing on where to put the new airport, the village of St. Scholastique. All right, so now that the location had finally been agreed upon, the huge vision for this airport began to be put together. For starters, it was going to be absolutely massive, covering 97,000 acres, about the same size as the entire city of Montreal itself, which would also make it the world's largest airport by area. At the beginning of construction, there were only two major highways leading to the site, so a third and fourth were planned, as well as a high-speed urban rail transit system that would not only take passengers back toward major cities, but would even directly connect into the Montreal Metro for quick and easy transit. Transportation. The airport and the city next to it were named Mirabel, and all things considered, it was on the fast track to becoming Canada's most important airport and a hub of transportation and industry. And construction began in 1969. But this wasn't a project that could drag on for too long. Coming up in 1976 were the Montreal Summer Olympics, the perfect opportunity to jumpstart Mirabel's new life. So, well, the infrastructure needed to be set up ASAP. But, as you can probably guess from the title of this video, these grand ambitions soon turned into catastrophe. <laughs> 
So the problems with Mirabel began with the public response, which was mostly negative, especially for the people living on the land that was about to be turned into an airport. The government expropriated all the required property, essentially kicking everyone out of their homes. And yes, these people were compensated accordingly, but they were rightfully upset as their entire community was basically bulldozed overnight. Now, to make matters even more infuriating for them, the massive amount of land that was expropriated wouldn't even be put to full use. Many of the grandiose plans for Mirabel were significantly downscaled later in the planning phase, resulting in the airport in its runways only taking up 19% of the entire property. The rest, the government claimed, would be used as a sound buffer, and in the future, possibly be turned into an industrial center. This downgrade made many ex-residents feel that their life had been completely uprooted for absolutely no reason. Now, the next problem that popped up involved the plans for the urban rail system. It would be called Tram, and it was intended to be able to reach speeds of up to 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles per hour, and the idea was that it would not only take passengers from the airport to the edge of Montreal, but would eventually be expanded to other routes around and throughout the city. The problem was, Tram was going to be very expensive, and nobody could seem to gather the necessary funds to actually build it. It was decided that it would have to be completed at a later date, and in the meantime, a system of buses would be used to take passengers to and from the site. Though by now significantly smaller than it was originally planned to be, Mirabel Airport was officially completed in late 1975, just in time for the Olympics the following year. Instead of the planned six runways and six terminals, it opens with just one terminal and two runways. Despite the downgrades, its final cost was still an estimated $500 million, which is equivalent to nearly $3 billion in today's money. And even though it was far less capable than intended, it was already time to begin shifting the air traffic away from Dorval and into the new Mirabel Airport. Estimates were that in a few years, 20 million annual passengers would be landing in Montreal, and the hope was to route 17 million of them through Mirabel. Now, to get this transition started, it was announced that all major flights, especially those from Europe, were now required to travel through Mirabel. The only exceptions to this were domestic flights and a select few from the United States who would be transitioned to Mirabel later in 1982. However, it soon became apparent that this mass transition wasn't going to be necessary. You remember the whole justification for this new airport's construction was the belief that the Montreal Dorval Airport would soon become overcrowded? Well, that's not what happened. In fact, in the years immediately after Mirabel's construction, air traffic to Montreal actually began to decline. Now, there were a few reasons for this. The first was the distance from the airport to Montreal itself. Building an airport far outside city limits is not a novel concept. In fact, it's used widely around the world for space reasons. For instance, going from the Munich International Airport to Munich itself takes around 25 minutes. It's not something that's uncommon. But Mirabel took this to a new level. Because the ambitious rail system wasn't going to be functional, passengers were forced to take an hour-long bus ride to get back to civilization, and that's only if traffic was good. And the reality was that the last thing anybody on a transatlantic flight wants to do is get on a f***ing bus for an hour. Add to this that because most domestic flights were still being handled by the other airport, you now have a second layer of inconvenience added to your travel. Imagine a European tourist who's traveling to Ottawa. Instead of a standard direct flight from Paris to Ottawa taking eight or nine hours, the tourist instead takes the transatlantic flight to Mirabel, then has to take an hour-long bus ride to Montreal Dorval Airport, and then gets to catch their connecting flight into Ottawa. Brilliant. It was a completely unnecessary complication, adding a few total hours of travel that caused a lot of would-be tourists to just avoid Montreal entirely and instead choose to spend their holiday in somewhere that would be less of a massive hassle. Then, to make matters even worse for the new airport, aircraft technology began making great strides in fuel efficiency throughout the 1970s, leading to a lot of commercial jets that could fly much further without needing to refuel. This meant that a lot of jets that used to stop in Montreal to fill their tanks before crossing the ocean were now able to just skip it entirely, taking away even more expected traffic. By 1991, instead of the expected 20 plus million Mirabel and Dorval combined, were only handling 8 million. Mirabel never managed to take in more than 3 million in a single year. Compare this to Toronto, who by this point was handling more than 18 million a year. Lots of airlines had completely shifted focus to Toronto and largely abandoned flights to Montreal, who had fallen to second place in terms of air traffic. Then Vancouver overtook it, and then even Calgary. Montreal had fallen to fourth place. Realizing that the city was taking too much of an economic hit by keeping Mirabel on life support, in 1997 it was announced that Dorval Airport would resume normal operations. The dream 
had failed, and Mirabelle turned out to be nothing more than a $500 million mistake, or $3 billion, again, in today's money. As airlines shifted back to Dorval, the traffic through Mirabel plummeted, and Mirabel City suffered as a result. The massive Chateau Airport Mirabel, which had been built in the 1970s in the hopes of catching the would-be millions of arriving passengers, shut down in 2002 due to a lack of business. In 2004, just 29 years after its opening, the last passenger aircraft took off from Mirabel, and ever since, the airport has only been used for cargo and private flights. With so much empty space in its terminal, new uses for it started popping up, such as using it as a movie set or a scene for music videos. Not bad, but pretty disappointing for an airport that was supposed to be the most important in the entire country. Later, Mirabel was in talks to be turned into a giant amusement park by a company under the then Lebanese prime minister and billionaire Rafik Hariri, but these negotiations fell through, probably because he was assassinated in 2005. Seeing that the huge space for an airport wasn't going to much use, in 2006, Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced that he would be returning expropriated land to 125 farmers, an act which he called correcting a historical injustice. This move was met with a lot of public support, but it was also a reminder to many that the land was taken for nothing. In hindsight, many critics pointed out that opting to run both airports simultaneously is what ultimately led to Mirabel never taking off. And many are disappointed that it never did. If Dorval Airport would have been completely shut down like it was supposed to, not only would Mirabel have had a better chance of rising to stardom, but the space the old airport occupied inside Montreal could have been used for a variety of purposes, such as parks. But that never happened. Instead, Dorval Airport received an expansion in 2000 when it became clear that Mirabel was a failure, reaffirming the original airport status as the sole gateway to Montreal. In fact, Mirabel was losing so much money every year that in 2014 they decided to finally demolish the main terminal building as it was providing no benefit while continuing to require maintenance. Over the decade prior, it had cost $30 million to maintain, meaning that the $10 million price tag for its demolition was certainly worth the bill. Now, as disastrous as this whole story has been, there is a bit of a positive ending. Between 2008 and 2018, the air traffic at Mirabel began to recover in an interesting way, tripling during the 10-year period. Passenger flights never returned, but what suddenly boosted its business was an increase in cargo flights, private jets, helicopters, and the use of runways by nearby flight schools. Other events uh, held at the airport and on the runways, such as the Canadian NASCAR. Then in 2020, it found a new purpose as a flight service station, and air traffic control now works for 16 hours a day, monitoring nearly 100,000 movements every year. Still, it's far from the glory that was imagined for it back in the 1960s, and regardless of what event it is hosting, Mirabel Airport will forever stand as a warning, a somber display of the consequences of hasty, expensive investments, and a forever reminder to not let ambitions exceed one's budget. Just before we go today, quick reminder to check out Tish Hanley by clicking the link in the description below, and you'll get 30% off your first box. And thank you for watching.